Howe Hill House, Howe Hill, Ludham, Norfolk, was the venue for the Open Morris Advanced Morris Instructional, held on Friday to Sunday, the 21st to the 23rd of February, 1986. The leader was Roy Domit and musician Alan Weir, filmed and edited by Robin James of Ben Stanton Morris.
but we really need an alternative to um, So, this is the way it sort of turns out. You face up, we're starting with the first half of the <coughs> It's a quarter of that, lollipop, but three boys in the bunch, you short people. That's how <laughs> The manuscripts talk of half a dozen dancers. Um, boys in the bunch, Bonnie Green, and Bonnie Green's actually described more or less in the introduction of one of the wise books, and Trunkles. And then the, the dancers that were jigs, dancers, hog set dancers, jockey, princess, or nothing girl, shake his head. Right? These don't only mention foot up, grounds, and hay. There's no mention in any of the manuscript of half jib, whole jib, back to back, and such like. Now you can either say that's like wheat leaf, it just doesn't happen, or you can say just they weren't in the dances that were collected for it. Very good reason because they were either corner dancers or, or jigs. Uh, so, uh, basic stepping one, two, three up, one, two, three up, two half capers, right? D. If you start on the left foot, you spring off the left foot, hop on the right. So, they're not furry, so half capers, right? Let's have a little bit of uh, warming up dancing. <laughs>
turn out face <laughs> Uh, half round, round, this is half round, as always, go round, turn out on the half pages, right? When we come to a hay, normal Morris hay, uh, if there is such a thing, you, you do it, and the back step, you do the back step, right? The following Jarvis, he just danced back step, feet, balls of feet going back, heel turning in, and he had his hands in his side, like the Irish, you know, just sort of did this. Should do a whole thing. A whole thing, yes. Same thing. I'm going to show a piece of this. <laughs>
one of the problems with describing dance, particularly describing the Morris to the sort of people who do the Morris. There really aren't words for it, so I have to show. Uh, the problem is people will snatch and they will not extend the arm. You know, somehow or other, it's got to be. Uh, uh, now, it's part of the problem. Part of the problem is people's perception of themselves. You know, they know very well that this person is built like this, but from here, I'm not. <laughs> you know, and in other words, where my hands are and so on, my hands are a whole hell of a long way away from my face when I do that. You know, that's the sort of perception you've got to get in front of a mirror or a window where it reflects and like to appreciate. You know, that your gestures are on the whole little gestures. <coughs> when somebody demonstrates and you copy, it is normal to copy within what you see rather than to exaggerate. You wouldn't be so rude as to exaggerate. You know, I did this. You can try that. Yeah. <laughs> well, not many of you would, anyway. Right? Yep, normal to exaggerate. You try for your own self respect and all these other emotional things. You know, you keep within what you see. And this is a result. You see with size that go on for many, many years, that their dancing gets smaller, tighter, you know. They get less and less movement because they're copying a smaller image all the time. But never do if you're selling quick copies. Right? So please, let's try some nice large movement. The chorus of movement of this, facial opposite, just for practice. We do this side step movement. It goes to the left and forward, to the right and then back to the place. Two half capers, the last one ending with a jump to land facing your corner, right? And then you pass this person with a left side step and a right side step. So left side step means that you can miss each other. Nobody actually get grabbed with you. Uh, but, and then you turn the face right on two half capers. Right, and you should have ended up. Right, let's try it with music. <laughs>
But as part of the purpose of this weekend is to get you all a bit more aware of what you're doing. So I'm going to spend time certainly this morning on, on some of this detail. Right? No. Yeah, the hands are getting better, but there's still a lot of people that are still doing, in effect, that. Yeah. No. With your handkerchief, you just do it and then flip it down. Right? Worry about that bit of the movement as well, right? So the handkerchief itself floats down. The word use, you, you get it in a show. This is a, sh a show, a show in the handkerchief. You get it in the float down like, like a can would float. No, it does. No. Falls just fast enough to be vertical. That's right. That's the bit the audience are seeing. They're not really seeing. They're not paying to see that right, well, eventually. Yeah. Um, direction of turn, yes. Um, everybody's a little bit too concerned about the detail, though. Right? When you come to the, the jump, yeah. Right, come in and make a very definite movement of it. You obviously don't have to jump on the person's toes, but it does help them. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm seeing is a reversion to another thing which I see in some sides of somehow doing this side step along the set, you know, um, they grew a way of doing, I don't know from here, of people sort of doing, you know, doing it sideways on, you face across the diagonal, yeah. and that movement's done like the jig, around <coughs> that line, not at some other angle, right, the fact that there's somebody there, is embarrassing in the workshop because the sets are too small. No, the sets should be that far apart. But try and do it. We'll just do the dancing again.
in doing the sidestep movement, you know, I know I'm flogging it. You see, but what I, what we started by doing was one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop. In other words, the path is sort of going <coughs> like that. Now the problem is that requires a little bit of travel effort and so on. Getting to get e yum bum little e yum bum tending not to go across before you come back. And that is the first step towards starting to get sideways on the other way. Now I have to emphasize this because so often people in the past have taken their way down to some workshops like this and then started to teach at their own club the way they were doing it at the end of the workshop rather than what actually was being taught or demonstrated in front of them. You know. And that's the way we get variation. Now, if that's variation what you want, then please do it. You know, there's nothing wrong with varying the Morris, but if it's done consciously. You know, uh, I object to, in a sense, things changing by, I want to say by default, you know, it's the fault of the person teaching you really, yeah. Uh, changing just because, in fact, you get into snack habits. You, know, you should give the way it was worked up a chance to start with. <coughs> um, I've tried in the range to get you to do yeah, to keep going. Can we just try like that? Because the notations that come to us just don't give an indication. But in the crossing in the corners, having done the jump, do you sidestep pass or do you do ordinary stepping? The answer is I don't know. The sidestep enables you to get into the way that solves one problem, uh, but the stepping gives the variety. You know, you, you really, there's a choice to be made there. Similarly, in the hay, uh, Jarvis, when he danced Dukes, Dukes, and that's important, you see. He did a back step in dances like Princess Royal, where the back step occurred and occurred in the hay in that dance. You see, so one interpretation is the back step. But the also an interpretation perfectly valid is it could be two and a half papers. And that makes the very library dance solved as well. Uh, certainly, we just do two whole A's, first time the back step, the second and a half papers, right? A's. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
a worn and deep trough where we used to dance. So, do the joke. Now, in doing the rounds, right, first time it's rounds as you've just done. That's really no problem though, isn't it? Right? The second time is rounds with side step, right? Now let's face around the circle of each step. And we side step to our left, moving forward. And that means we move back away from the centre step bit, right? Yeah. And then we side step right into the middle. And then you turn to come back on your two half cadence. Which means you've got to move down a bit because the next side step to your left is in. And if you're already in, there's no more in left, right? And then out. And turn to your right to face front. In this. Can we just try out the music? <laughs> So don't worry, we'll get carried away by listening. I like a big 
you step in. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean by all of this yeah. um, I have to check on my sorrow song because I say things and actually what I mean. <laughs> it's a sign of age. But um, second time, half, you know, in the half papers. Through, and the final time. <laughs> Can we actually just practice the tap crossing with your partner?
When you're learning basic movement, particularly body, posture, and arms, look at yourself in a mirror or something which is a figure. See what you're like. Um, I'm afraid the only one we've got is the glass of the mirror box. <laughs> look at yourself. It's well worth the effort. The professional dancers in dance studios have mirrors. I'm afraid the honest world can't afford to hire tax studios in quite the same way. But I know from experience of doing workshops in dance studios, you can get everything lined up in front of the mirrors, and you can do something, and it all goes just like that. And people see themselves. If you haven't had the experience of actually dancing, copying when you can see yourself in other people, as you do it, you know, you don't realize what you're missing is a trick of the trade. Right. Um, now we're going to learn the, the, the two by two dancers. Right. Now those are the, basically the, the, the three set dancers. Face up. No. Is it doing that? But no, it isn't. <laughs> you dance, it's like it, it's a, really it's a jig done by the whole set. And therefore, um, it's structured it, almost the same as one to do a jig. You do it two by two, except they have three pairs. So we start off by doing the foot up twice. You don't turn on the half curve, you just do it facing up. But at the end, when you finish a bit, you walk to the bottom. Right? Let's just let's just start um, let's do princess walk. Does that change? <coughs> princess walk. Princess walk. Of you know, how do you come into the sidestep movement 
And the way I prefer, and it's just me, is that those that are facing down, see this one facing up, they will half caper eight, your half caper eight, round to face front, and then we go into the, the side step movement, right? Now, the side step movement for Princess Raw is a long side step. I think it's to the left and to the right, must be, because all the fours are right there. Dee um bum dee dee um dum dee um dum dee dee um. And then it's a whole hand with the hands at the side, right? Let's just try and cross. I'll the hand down. The hands do the back set, the hand set.
before you started. <laughs> Probably there were more slow capers, but we don't know what they are. You, know, you have to invent another lot if you want the fourth set. Okay. Um, the dance nutting girl is down. the same dance except that you do the long side step in a half pay and then the long side step at the other end in half pay back to fill up the music. We will just do one chorus to illustrate that. A nutting girl. Just a. So you 
don't hop forward, you, you travel on the half counters and then back step into place. I mean, all the right? <laughs> to be fair. Let's do it once more then. <laughs> Do it a bit differently. 
Um, for example, the winning side doesn't do the walk back that way. They actually use the half capers at the end to actually get to the bottom on it. You don't walk down there, so you're half capers. So then you go to the bottom, and then the next one goes to the bottom, the next one goes to the bottom. So you don't actually invert the set. No. They found that to their satisfaction. That actually contributed to the way that Sharp had it. Sharp certainly had it for reversing the set the way it did. But as far as I'm concerned, there are advantages in keeping the top couple at the top all the time. Yeah. So it's an option that you have. Right. Um, I don't want to do any made up ones. We've really done all the production to ones that are worth while. Um, I want you to try now. We'll get the sets together, one more dance, we'll do Harley Mary, and then we'll go and look at the films, I think. I'm back in the Now, Stroud, early cherry, um, they were very taken by Duckington, and started to think, well, why aren't there the other figures? You know? And their argument was, well, half of them were jigs anyhow, which explains why they're figures, and the others were effectively corner dancers, which like Sherwood explained why they're figures. So if you actually have set dances and other choruses to introduce, you then, then you could end up with figures. You see? So let's dance a half jig. Come on in. Come on, sit. <laughs> now, in this dance, I want you to, to do the normal stepping down and up. And I want you to do the back step up and down. Uh, right? So, in slow motion, we can do a half jig, for example. One, two, three, and one, two, three, snap, push, and push. It's, it's very nice. Oh, yes, it's there. Go on. One, two, three, and one, two, three, snap, push. The snatch occurs when the bodies are covering each other. You know, so there's a phase shift where I couldn't see it. Oh, it didn't the wrong spot. Let's just try it. Now, hi, Mary. Um, basically, sidestep across the drop. So just work the course, everybody. Sidestep across. Two half pages to turn in front. Half pay on the wrong side. Right? Can you turn Um... We all turned the same way. What was that? Left hand. Left. And half, half hay. Um, no, in the back step, in the in the half hay, also, right? Try and keep that going through there. Let's just try back to where we started. We we'll just practice a chorus.
easy to express the sarpedo, with free movement to solve, with enough room for manoeuvre as a variation idea to solve, to produce a nice free movement. <coughs> uh, I think, like this last one, yeah, that's a very interesting interpretation. No, right, we've had an hour of hard work. Pick up your glass, fill up your glass, we'll go along. <laughs> Right. right, six, and we'll start working on Aston and the Witch. So, the reasons we've done the traditions we've done this weekend are important. Abingdon, living tradition, I was involved with it. At Oddington, it was one of the first traditions that was revived, Coxwell's was revived from manuscript. In 1961, with the assistance of most of the Thames Valley Morris men, we got together to work through the manuscript to try and understand what, uh, what these dances were. And really, that was the initial motivation which culminated for 10 or 15 years later in the Black Book and all its dances. Uh, um, so, Ollington was one of, so one of the first revivals. Um, uh, so I was very much uh, involved in how we set about interpreting manuscript and trying to find a set of grain rules. You know, the grain rules have to be things like, in the end you have to do what it says. The problem is actually understanding what it says. You know, getting to understand what the, the character meant. Because um, if you have a, a like Janet Blunt Adderbury described a movement as cross corners. Uh, Westminster read that notation, copied it, and they have a corner dance. Unfortunately, if you put your right hands in cross corners, that's what she meant. Uh, and when you read the rest of it, and sort of have a hard think about what she it meant to the collector what these words were, then you would have been able to do these things about it. Um, a Duckington, again, a similar sort of exercise, but because I had run across the old man, and therefore had a, a certain insight into the tradition of, particularly when we look at time, looking for, I say, a, a free-flowing beginners or simple tradition that we, we see. And then I hope to show you those two films, you see, there's mine, and there's Darkington's village, and Strauss' extremes, and there are a lot of possibilities in between. There's a, a band of interpretation. Now, Aston and the Witchwood is yet another one in this sort. Um, the history, as far as I know, is that the Leafield men thought of Ascot as the next generation of dancers, the ones that followed them. So, Leafield stopped so 1860-ish, and Ascot was still going 20 years or going 20 years old, a young, younger generation. The, the older dance, the two Moss brothers, Moss brothers <laughs> <laughs> uh, had been met by Sharp, um, and Tiddy, who was Sharp's friend, who lived in Ascot under the Richwood, introduced Sharp to some of the local dancers, and it was through um, Sharp saying to the that he was a person to collect from the two older brothers and then from William Prattney who was a dancer in one of the younger Ascot sides, from which we have some notation material. Uh, two or three dancer jigs, a set dancing or got something to do that. Also, Tiddy of course started a sign in the village, a boys' sign before the First World War, uh, mix well, boys and girls dancing together. Um, I'm not sure if they mixed in the sense of all the same set or boys, tin boys, and after the war. Um, I have photographs of late 1924 of the sort of teenagers actually dancing in the village. And some of the older men gave them advice, and certainly Sharp's notation circulated. And Ralph Honeybow, who had been Tinney's Batman in the First World War, uh, and became, I think, the Raskin's followers of Oxford Raskin. Yeah. Um, he then became a teacher and went to live at Evesham uh, in the late 20s. He had been a member for several years of the EFDS's headquarters team. So somebody who came out of the villages had learned his Morris, a mixture of Headington and everything else, of course, as well as Ascot, at home, 
as it were, knew all dancers and grown up into society's leading tea. And I met him and his wife um, in the early 60s, I was 60, 61, while we were still alive in Evesham. Um, his wife, um, he being, you know, sort of come out like, his wife was sort of from a very upper middle class family and learned to play the piano, and she had played for a sharp actually giving workshops around the country, at least in the West Country. And she had a, a delightful story to tell of they missed the train at Reading. So Sharp proceeded to teach them some recently recovered plane for dancing on the end of the platform. Much to the amazement of all the other passengers and to the extreme annoyance of the station master. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, of the, the um, people who learned at school, uh, some of them were, were, have been met in a game, and that's what appeared late 50s, early 60s. Uh, Mrs. Edwards, who was the postmistress, who was at least as wide as she was tall at the time we met her, um, she had learned all the dancers, and she was able to dance for us by putting her hands in the passage walls to help support herself, you know, so that she could actually be, couldn't see her feet at all. <laughs> And uh, Townsend, who uh, was a very fine dancer, and was the one who really knew and remembered all the hand movements. You know, we actually do it well. Unfortunately, um, after I'd seen him a couple of times, he was picking apples and fell over an apple tree and goes back and died not long afterwards. And it was, um, otherwise, he might still be with us. You know, we're talking with people in those days when they were 60. Uh, so, um, our understanding of Ascot is a mixture of Sharp's manuscript uh, and some contact with people. It, things like the jigs we've got were picked up mostly from people, uh, so there are more than one version of uh, Jockey Ascot floating around. I don't know what, every person who collected from had the second version of doing it. Uh, probably there was only one way that they did it originally, but they all had different memories. Uh, no way I could know that. Yeah, that does lead us. Now, the, one of the Moss, Benjamin Moss, went up to London uh, to be employed by Mary Neal. And Mary Neal got about 30 Cotswold dancers to go up and teach the Esperance Club before the First World War. It's a large number of dancers, and you know, she can take the middleman, Mr. Sharp, in other words. You know, she sort of said, you know, here's just trying to dance, you know, and got the girls. Um, who was a late teenage, early 20s, the most um, touchy mimic. And then she used the girls to do the teaching in the Morrison Rocks. And there are a limited number of boats uh, in that area that Mary Neal would celebrate. And that reflects, in fact, on the interpretation of the dance. Whereas the sharp notation suggests that the figures um, of the normal set dance were all fairly standard, um, except for the oddity of half year. But she has a look that um, all the figures were structured the same same way as it is this way. Um, I can understand, having seen Sharp's field notes, how his manuscript gets like it does, because he was very fond of writing something down and then sort of saying something like all the others the same or something like that. You know, I was not necessarily having seen it or asked the question, just assume what the answers would be. Uh, uh, if I ever say critical of that shark, let me say, if somebody can cycle into a village at 10 o'clock in the morning, find the good dancer in the village, collect the tradition, and then leave at lunchtime, as he seemed to be able to do, uh, it really was incredible. And although he's been found dead in sort of distorting the truth, in the sense of not actually stopped long enough to find out what the truth really was, in some places. His achievement's incredible. Now, I mean, he was much more right than he was ever wrong. And all the things that we have a go at in the way, his interpretation, you know, if you actually read the Morris book carefully at the front, particularly, he's covered himself on things like starting. You know, you start on left or right foot, he chose the right foot. He explains why he chose the right foot, it just happened to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, um, <coughs> Very incredible. Anybody else I know, everybody else I know who's collected, like Cameron and Schofield, found it extremely difficult to collect dancers. Um, it helps much more if you're in the same cultural background, which is difficult, you know, for all the people who ever collected. 
But then you find, you see, as I have found in my time, that you go along to having your dance <coughs> that you know personally, and you spend all your time talking about the allotment. <laughs> Think of this sort, you know. Um, it's very difficult with people you know to pin them down in the group and say, hey, I can't really talk about so and so and so and so. And they say, oh God, you know, why do I talk about that? And why do I have to scratch my memory? You know, I forgot the day and wanted to forget the day. So aspects. Ordinary sort of stuff, frivolous, um, face across, face across with body. Let's learn the structure of partnership. <laughs> Ordinary stepping across. Don't worry about the hand raise, we've got one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop. This crossover. Now you do a cross back step like heading did to come back. Right? Cross and up, cross apart. And then on your left foot, do a galley hop all the way round to your left. <laughs> Up to the other side, just when your right foot's in the air. One, two, three, hop. One, two, three, cross back, cross apart, cross apart, cross apart, and get it. That's not yet. Right. So you only do a galley in the first half. This leads to very interesting accidental rule that all the evidence we have is that at ask if only galleyed on the left foot in the things that we've got. Therefore, you elevate that to the golden rule. In ask if you only galley on the left foot. Just as I said, it's stylizing things. You have to make these sort of decisions. But can we try out the music? Hand movements are down and up and twists on the cross there, of course. Step. It's just that the emphasis, the shape of the movement, 
is different because you're, you're straining for a lift on the first bit and you're actually letting yourself relax into the back step. Right? As you cross your feet, right, you, you bend. Yeah, you're going down and up. Right? So cross and bend, and as you come out straight, <coughs> lift yourself up and look so the one is. You know, and you should at the same time, and I know it's getting common here, having to think at this end and this end at the same time. You, know, you should at the same time also be trying to lift the arms and shoulders, get the body going up. Let's just try it with the cross back step, right? Don't worry about putting the galley in there, just do half chips, cross back.
Good Morris, to me, seems to have this um, edge, this drive into a movement. You know, the first strong beat has a bit of thrust. If you stand like I am with your balls and your heels on the ground, it just takes you time to rotate forward and move off. So anybody who wants to figure by jumping and then has to rotate to move in. You may be conscious of moving, but the audience doesn't see the slight tilt of the body at the time there. It just looks like you're, you're slack. In fact, you know, you've lost the drive. So you've got to have some way of rotating. There are a number of ways of rotating, which, according to my book, the easiest way is actually to lift your toes up. <laughs> I just can't bring myself to land on my toes and then go. <laughs> so, you, you have two other, two other things. One, of course, is just to kick a foot forward. You know, if, you, if you want to move forward by accelerating a bit of you, you actually push against the floor, which means the rest of you goes forward. So when you land, that first kick helps you to go forward, or that first stretch out. So the first thing you want to be conscious of when you land is to go into the next move. Now help yourself by put, push, kicking that foot forward. forward huh? The second thing, of course, is that because you go into it with a jump, the easiest thing to do is when you jump, to actually move your toes backwards. So don't land straight. Land ready to push, to fall into it. No, think of it, the sprinter like that. I don't actually suggest leaving that front forward. <laughs> no, but when you jump, bring the concentration of your feet so that you are able to push yourself forward and get that bit of drive into it. But, so that's that bit of a jumping which I think is Now the problem of a galley. Let's take a galley in isolation. The real difficulty, if you stand nice and upright and just try and turn, the problem is keeping yourself going. Right? Anybody else other than Morris dancers, when they do pirouettes, they recognise the problem of energy dissipation is solved by, in fact, reducing your role of inertia. The one up the centre now. Sorry, I've got a lot of cross cutting for one principal axis of tilting. Is logic to turn? You start by in fact adopting a posture. Crouch your foot and legs out after. So you have a higher inertia when you start to turn. Right? So instead of trying to turn like this, you actually start like that. As you turn, you pull yourself in. Ballet dancers talk about putting themselves up, you know, to look good, but it's really the same thing. You pull up, you, you bring in the arms and legs, so and you know, sort of come in, so you reduce, you know, here, here's skaters, or like skaters, you know, this one, they get like that. Because the difference between the role of inertia of this and that is about a factor of four and one, right? And from this, to hands in like this, you know, it's a go up another factor of two. So the objective in turning is actually put yourself in. And the energy of the turn um, is actually works to your maximum energy to keep you going. And that's your problem, you see. You're not being conscious at this stage of saying, oh, I have to do this to push me around, I have to somehow twist my foot, I have to fit my head around. <laughs> you know, all these things that take good dancers a year or two to learn to coordinate properly, right? But I want you to know, with that reflection, right, you're coming back and you're going to start with your knee turned out. Right, we're going to use that to come in that self center. You bring your knee close in, so and then you finally bring it down. Minimise how much is it or extension you've got in your limbs when you're facing front. Right, can we, how can you actually practice that? Well, you just have to play some A's and let them do let them do a few half chips. Yes. Has to be done on the hoof, I'm afraid.
reaction time to say that. Right. You've all got the business of spreading your arms and legs now, right? <laughs> now you've apologised to your friends. Right? Now the problem is actually in turning, bringing that knee in and as as you do, bringing these arms in as well. So, all right, you're bringing your arms up, say, like a jump, and it's bringing in from there, you know, right? Try and bring them in as you turn around. Try it again, same thing. Described as 
the upper arms up by the ear. So in no way does that mean it's a hip. Right? It might have meant it's like that. <laughs> but this reaching high, you know what I last night about the sidestep being a vigorous movement as well. You know, you're trying to, you're trying to reach as high as you can with the arm and get the handkerchief up to the top. And the handkerchief is not, the handkerchief's doing the work, you know, not the hand. It's a flick of the wrist and the hand, not a great big wave from the elbow. Big problem, people, I know, I know what the problem is, that people want to share the loads. They think, why can't my shoulder and elbow do some of the work? Why do I have to just make my wrist do it all? So they'd like to somehow you know, spread it all around. Maybe the objective here is like, just try and get that. Side step left, side step right, half hay, you go up towards the top, each half, you middles, right, and you cross back um, to place. Now, I would prefer you to cross back across the set as an Oddington rather than up and down the set as a field table. Um, it doesn't really matter, I suppose, because the film just shows you should go. Let's just try and chorus. <laughs> Set. Yeah, it wasn't that one. 
Uh, yeah, so you choose option, every option, you choose them so that you can distinguish between your version of one tradition and your version of your own tradition, and so on, right? Um, I think we've got it all, haven't we? All the figures. Yeah. And lightly, if you don't want the figures out of the I want you to get them too bad to do it across the set. I was like you to do it to your opposite. I'm very fond of that way of doing that, so I'm sorry to say. But you can use it where you can face up there and you can do the cross match box. But it's not that you feel like it's trying to be able to do it. Right, let's just try and poise the bunch.
So you're up every time. But that's the first two times, plain capers. The slow capers do not in fact require slow music, it just carries on playing. But they are caper, 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 caper. Right, so caper, caper, RGB together. And the arms are still going down in that. So,
twice. Finish, right? So as soon as pace is enough, try the whole thing. Let's try the whole thing. Across at the end of figures. 
which of course we've done conventionally, like that, but we ended the dance like that, right? It's to do that every time. Right? In other words, evens offer up the stick and get hit at the times that we're going to try and hit. <laughs>
Right, we're going to think of doing nothing. Right? The chorus is holding it double. So it's very much like all the other dances in that sense. Because you have that little extra bit at the end of each figure. You will realise now that when I say hang on, ta when it comes to doing half jib, you know, becomes more difficult. Because you're not flowing into it now, you're actually going to stop as well. And again, it's quite a common interpretation dance to actually say, well, forget the gangs in that dance as well. But we'll try it anyway. We'll try it. This is the worst, right? We'll try to do it in difficult way. Right? <laughs>
don't. You teach yourself, really, rather than me tell you things and you uh, then forget about it. <coughs> things that you should have noticed, but like the range, I say, think about it. You know, if you're going to hit a cross, you only can go halfway range. No, you actually have to prepare yourself for that. Um, we're doing the game. Um, now, the other thing is that during the dance, when you do the cross backs and end with a jump, people have spent at least half the dance restraining themselves from hitting, but they couldn't restrain themselves from playing with their sticker <laughs> right? so, this, this is where the problem comes when presenting dance is. You know, do we do it the way it was, or do we actually try and overcome some of the problems? Now, the problem here is the fact that there's a jump at the end of the cross backs. If you actually cross back and don't jump, right, you don't have this desire to frantically wave your stick around. Right? So, let me think about it, you know, um, particularly for example in the half. Let's just do a kiss.
30 something, you know, is the weekend after uh, Whitson, which is not the spring bank holiday anymore. In fact, I, was, I think this year, to any start the spring bank holiday actually coincide normally. It turns out like a week later. And La Mayor is on the Monday. Now, the La Mayor, the Morris stopped many years ago, in you know, about 1880-ish. Uh, but there was a <coughs> DS class in the village, so there was a Morris sign between the wars. I think at least one of which one down to that is still alive. It is trotted out each Trinity Sunday. You have his picture taken with everybody else, uh, dear old soul. And the sign that actually did heading him and nothing else. Uh, but the, the last cooking side included the William Pillman um, and his brother, who Sharp met in the sort of 1921-22 sort of period and got some moss. And the Black Book includes the dancers, um, Trunkles, and Old Woman Tossed Up, as collected from Sharp. Now, Sharp's formal write-up of it is not very important, his field notes exist for that period, and you can see there's much more information about the extra types of steps and so on that were actually used in Trunkles. So I was fairly sure those two dancers uh, are well founded. When the village side decided to get going, there was already a team called Green Oak at Doncaster, uh, which you may know of, um, doing or interpreting Kirkington. Um, Paul Dalton pointed out, I think it, when I first met, he already made 12 dances out of the information available. And if you buy them in booklets on uh, uh, the Dave's tradition, like the Kirkland 10 one, which is the fattest, based on the least material. <laughs> I mean, I had trouble getting all the material that exists on Kirkland on the one side in Paul's <laughs> You know, didn't stop him. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that the sort of approach to producing tradition. But he did that. Um, and when, when the Berries wanted to get the sign going in the village and were aware of some Kirkland material, and they're aware of this because the Cambridge men had interpreted the manuscript for Trunkles and had done that occasionally on their Cotswold tours. And the Oxford University side did trunkles. They were inviting each year to come across to the land now and dance at the meal. You know, so they, they were doing Kirsten trunkles. Not very well, I might say, from my memory of it. So when the British, when the Berries wanted to get the British side together, they were looking for it. And they consulted, first of all, Tim and Adderbury from the point of view of dance, Asian dance. But also, uh, I'm not sure if they contacted Paul, Paul contacted them. It's one of these debatable things. Uh, but Paul came to uh, I don't know if you know Paul, he ran on board the and said it's going to be done like this, that, and the other, you know, that because it's right. Uh, and so on. So they said, yes, 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 so you know. And then when he left, they did their own thing. <laughs> uh, um, now, the proof of the pudding is that I don't think anything they do is inconsistent with what's connected. They've obviously added dance into the, into the tradition, which they've no real um, colour for. But I said the proof is always with these things is when you've done it, do you actually think it feels like Morris? When they do it, does it look like Morris? And I'll show you some film after we've done this session and you can judge this for yourself. My feeling is that. Uh, we've got to a stage of traditions where we're trying to recover the ones which we know almost nothing about. Uh, haven't quite got to the stage of recovering the ones we know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets a bit like that. You might actually say the whole of the state of England who do teams who do stave dances are actually a recovery of nothing. Because it is based on sort of two newspaper cuttings and a, a note written in somebody's minute book and things like this. It's almost no material. Right. Um, Let's start. Normal hand movements? No. You see, that's the first thing. You bend your arm at the elbow in right angles, and essentially the arm doesn't go where the bottom. So the arm movement is sort of down, no, like that. Rather, relax. The handkerchiefs do all the work. That's why you have big handkerchiefs. <laughs> Stuck with an audience which actually has large handkerchiefs. It's one of my favourite remarks. <laughs> That's again the yeah. uh, The back step is a hockle, right? Now, they like to describe it as a gammy done in reverse. Right? You know, you do fairly wide back step. Right. 
So let's take you through slowly, right? One, two, three, four. What? To right foot to this, you can do
I say, just to be different to anybody else, Ollie's a chosen kid. <laughs> So you come in 
like that, and then you can hop away to the bottom place. So, right, back to here, back to the top. The middle pair are all right. They come up. As they go down, they come up, turn rain, and nip into the middle to stand shoulder to shoulder with this lot, right? So they come up, you go down the outside, nip around quickly to come into the middle so that... So you're in a tight bunch facing in, right? And you're going to hop away that way. <laughs> Good. Now back to where you start. <laughs> <laughs> you come up the middle, right? And when you get past, when they've all passed you and left you there, you obviously can't see anybody. You turn round to face the other way and you hop back to the end. <laughs> right? But you turn out. <laughs> so as these go down, nip around, you come through and turn very quickly into a tight bunch and hop away. <laughs> Now, let's do the second half. <laughs> Face down, everybody, and you come down, right? You nip around, you go through, quick turn. That's right. You shouldn't come into a tight bunch, you're in a tight bunch when you turn. Right, you go to the kitchen. Let's see if you can do it to music. <laughs>
Well, we'll, we'll have a, a, a sidestep in between each bit. So, four sidesteps and then half pay. Let's just, everybody walk it, right? Cast, middles up, middles and down, right? Walk backwards, down the other side. There you go, between the foot and your arm. Ready, right? Then what? Split there. Oh yeah, second double take. You're going to be there. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Right? Yeah. Your walls going up.
sides brought in. Glory shears. Yes, yes. Or a galley 
as is appropriate, right? So, can I start with foot up? It's what? Is that one? Oh, yes, did I say <laughs> Why do you think they've talking about jumps and things like this? You know, showing you all the spot. <laughs> Don't do too much of it. Right, one, two, three, hop, step and jump. Right, and in this case, we're going to carry eight to face the other way and do it down. This is the foot up window, right? Let's have some.
For those from the early days of Wolf will remember this got into Ilmington somehow. <laughs> you cross over, passing right shoulders, turn the other way on the jump. Which is the other one? <laughs> ah, you mean which direction you turn? Yes. No, the other face the other way is the way the other way to you're going, is what I meant. <laughs>
arcade dancers. They recognized each to be different by some small difference which most of us would actually tend to ignore. <laughs> like, if it was an energetic tune, they did half the chorus rather than all of it. Uh, or, sometimes it's a long side step, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, or, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, hop. Or, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, hop, one, two, three, hop, step, and Right now, we're doing country gardens, which is the long side step each way will ain't the jump. Will ain't the jump, right? Let's just try that. Hand up, like, it was, uh, it's sort of, Stand with both hands up, right, and then put one down. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, because of the cross side step, the forward one. <laughs> Fourth, isn't it? Yeah, the forward one. Try and keep the 
top of the body upright. Keep your head more or less upright. Keep your eyes looking forward. Perhaps you're on your leg to smile. There you go. Try and keep this posture, this balance, and doing the jump. Otherwise, you might hurt your back. That's what we're worried about. Let's try it. Try to hold down. Are you ready for this? <laughs>
put number one to stand up, uh, for only number one to stand up, and the other five to stand back against the wall. Right? Do that. Just number one. Stand up. Oh, somebody else put number one on. When they turn, I do number two. When they turn round, number three dances on on the plane papers to join it, right? One, three, two, three, right. Then, next time they pass, two people come on, and the last time, two people come on, and then I say, Gally left, and we do a hay with the set the wrong way round. Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay, much bigger way. Right, let's try. Corners who are the people opposite you in that traditional parlance, right? Yeah. 
That means the, the figures are different, right? First of all, the figures in between are rounds. That's all we're going to do, like Sherborne. In practice, they did the corner dances at great length. Every corner was done twice, which meant they did all the figures and rounds as well. We're not going to play that game tonight. Uh, right. Foot up and hold hay. Uh, the foot up was not done with the jump, just two bars a second. So, uh, if you don't want to change at this time, and I, I don't mind either, but essentially, right? I don't want to jump this. But choruses, the choruses, there are four, right? The first one is uh, like we did in May of the Mill. Uh, It's degenerated into sort of uh, you know, more fighting, that's right. But remember, it was originally this. Right? The second time is two furries, which is degenerated into <laughs> right? kicking. The third and fourth time are the slow capers. So longer slow capers are incredibly easy. <laughs> For those who did Ollington last night. <laughs> right? The RTB is back together, caper, caper. Right? And the uprights are cross, cross, caper, caper. And the hand looms, of course, are the opposite to Ollington. <laughs> out, out, caper, caper. And out, out. Simple thing. We can do the dance. <laughs> corners, corners, that's right. You, it's a corner dance and you do a long side step, short side step, together, jump. The corner, that's right, yeah. Well, no, I thought you had something different, sorry. Oh, that way, no, no, no. I was relying on telling you what to do as we got going, you're going to say, we can shit. Right, we go.
Stone Capers, right? <laughs> RGB with a gay.